We're going to talk about next, alternators. Most of you, so let's focus on this because that's what pretty much 99% of us have, right? It's an alternator circuit, right? Your alternator is daisy chained to the starter solenoid post coming through a battery switch connected to a battery. Pretty straightforward. If you can start your engine, you've confirmed that you have power up to here, right? You know, if you can start your engine, you have power up to here. The chance of this wire failing is possible if you've changed your alternator output, got a bigger one and didn't change the wire, or if you put an external regulator and then changed that wire. So that would be a clue. But most of the time, to be honest, your alternator fails because it's so freaking hot in the engine room and there's not enough ventilation and it's a horrible place to work. And alternators die all the time, all the time. And you take them off, you bring them in an alternator shop, they're like, oh my God, what happened to this alternator? Has it been living in hell? And you're like, no, it's just a boat. He's like, well, it kind of looks like hell. Because, you know, the dusting, what happens is people have V-belt alignment issues. Right? The dusting covers everything inside the alternator. And imagine being covered. Well, you, it's hard to dissipate heat, right? So all that dusting that you think is just an aesthetic displeasure is actually causing the covering of the whole alternator inside. And for heat dissipation, it's a big problem. And then it causes alternator failure, right? So alternators are pretty easy to diagnose in terms of problems. It's generally the alternator that dies. Or if you have an alternator with an external regulator, then what you want to do is you want to troubleshoot what's called the field voltage. The field voltage is the device that actually puts, applies sort of like an actuator, right? It's like you're petting on, pressing on the, ga the gas pedal in your car. And so what we do when we troubleshoot that problem, we actually do full, full field, meaning we actually short, we go from 12 volts with a fuse right to field. We're bypassing the external regulator. We're like, screw the external regulator. Let's bypass it altogether. Let's see if that alternator will work at full capacity. If it works at full capacity, what we've demonstrated is that the field voltage from the external regulator is not working. Now, why is it not working? And then it becomes not an alternator problem. It becomes an external regulator problem. But that's how you isolate if it's external regulator or an alternator problem. But to be honest, most of the time, your alternator just simply failed. Hence why? People that go further afield should have a spare alternator. I have a spare alternator. Never used it, but it's ready to be used. It's on my boat. And one day when my alternator will fail, and it will fail, I'll be able to tell someone and be very proud that I carried that alternator for 11 years for a reason. Because it's been 11 years I've been carrying that alternator. Any questions on alternators? Well, that's really easy. Yeah, because if it's an internal regulator, it doesn't matter. It's, the problem is still within the alternator. They generally don't fail, very rarely. They're so simple. Super rare that I've seen an internal regulator fail. The issue generally is the alternator itself, right? And that's it. It's, they, just, they just die. They just kind of, it's too hot. So you personally notice it like Well, what you'll notice is, yeah, good question. How do you notice your alternator is not charging? Remember, there's no such thing as voltage being an indication. It's like saying your heart rate, there's a value for heart rate that's a good heart rate. There isn't. What's a good heart rate? Well, it depends on what you're doing. But you can put a, a voltmeter uh, right on the alternator But here's the dilemma, right? That's why I'm saying volts is not a, a value that you look in itself. You can't. It's like heart rate. Nobody ever says, what is your heart rate? That's a good heart rate. Never. It's what is your heart rate depending on what you're doing. So you start your engine, your battery voltage could be 11.5 volts. You start your engine, your battery voltage is now 12. Is that good or bad? That's good. Is your alternator working? Yes. Is it what you would consider a charging voltage? No. Someone would tell you, oh, 12 volts, your alternator is not working. Those are platitudes. That's what people say. They're not thinking. They're just repeating information. It's all about an incremental difference. If your voltage, your batteries were completely empty, you have a 50 amp alternator, you have a 400 amp hour battery bank, an alternator, it's like saying my swimming pool is empty. 
you start putting a fire nozzle in it, and you're like, well, it's not filling the pool. Obviously, there's no flow, and this thing is gushing in. It's not going to fill the pool of water in an instant. It's going to take time. It might take three hours, four hours, five hours for that battery bank to be full. So what, you'd look like, what you look for when you look at volts is an incremental change. What is the volts prior to running the alternator, having the engine on, and what is it afterwards? If your engine, you start your engine, you see 11 volts or whatever it is, or 11 and a half, and it doesn't increase after you start your engine, your alternator's not working. If it increases, and it's not as high as you'd like it, it doesn't mean the alternator's not working, it means that your batteries were too empty. Or it means that your alternator is too small as a function of your battery bank size. And that could be a common problem. But never, ever, ever think that your voltage is this target value. It isn't. It's about a change. What's a change that you see? And I see that all the time, and people blame things, and they're not understanding that it's, an increment is better than nothing. There's no absolute. Question in the back? I'm trying to digest what you just said. So I, I have an older boat, an 88. Um, the alternator, to my previous way of thinking, works intermittently. So sometimes it works right off the dock, and I, you know, I'll look at the, the analog voltmeter, and it's 14. Great. It's working. Other times, the engine's kicking along. It's, it's only showing 12 on the analog panel. And then maybe after an hour, I'll hear the pitch of the engine change, and then all of a sudden, it's showing 14. And I think the alternator. Yeah, that's, it is. I think that's, you're absolutely right. So that means that most likely to me, it's a problem with your, external regula your internal regulator. There's also some alternators that need to be excited. Clearly, there's a, you turn the ignition button, and they need to be excited. They need to be sent 12 volts, and that 12 volts can only happen sometimes. They're all different. There's not, it's not an alternator. And if that alternator is receiving that exciting voltage, from your ignition panel when you turn it on, and if that connection is intermittent, that's what's gonna happen. But what you described is a really good way. You can hear your alternator turn on or off on a boat by the way the engine pitch changes. I can hear it on my boat clearly. You'll hear it, you'll see the engine is actually gonna work harder because suddenly there's a large load on the alternator. Uh, not on the alternator, on the engine. So that sounds to me like an exciter problem or an internal regulator problem. Yes, you had a question on alternators. Yeah, that's actually a good thing. That's a feature. You don't want belt slippage. You want everything to be warmed up. Balmar does the same thing. They wait for about 45 seconds. That's actually a good thing. Hey? It's yeah, it's settable, absolutely. There's a timer, so that's a good thing. That's a feature. You don't want your alternator to kick in right away. You don't want it to kick in right away. I know, you're like, what? No, you want it to wait. Balmar does it about 45 seconds. Some other people will do 90, two minutes, it's fine. Give it time, let everything to warm up. Everything is set up, the belt is everything. You don't want to load over the engine too much, right? Easier to start because now that alternator is not at other load. Like when it turns, it's no load. It's as soon as you start exciting it and then you start asking it to produce output. Like think about on my boat. My boat, I've got a 30 horsepower engine and I've got a five amp alternator, effectively. It's, it draws like five horsepower, not five amp, five horsepower. What's well, better when I start my engine that I don't have another five horsepower load if I'm not under load. Like I don't start my engine and I'm in gear, right? I'm in neutral, start my engine, let the engine, and then I wait a period of time, right? Let everything warm up, and then I put my engine in gear. There's no load when I start my engine Unless because I have a delay on my alternator kicking in on my boat as well through the Balmar external regulator. So that's a feature. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> you see? It's not even a problem. Any other questions on alternators? Is there any advantage to having two alternators run off of one engine? Yeah, the question is, is there an advantage of having two alternators off one engine? And I would say yes. Uh, because then you have one for house, one for engine and then you don't even have to worry about battery combiners or battery isolators. We talked about that yesterday. Totally agree. Two alternators way better and you see like Nigel Calder did that on his boat. The question is how do you fit a second alternator on your engine? I mean, I want a lot of things in life. There's a lot of things I just can't have. I have a small engine. I don't have a Yanmar. I can't put another one. It would be like a mechanical challenge to fit one in. There's just no space. If I could, I would. For sure. And you'll see boats that do. You see a lot of boats, even power boats, they'll actually have trawlers 
two, two alternators for the engines, and they'll have put a big freaking house alternator on one of the engines. And that's pretty sweet. That's really good. Because every single battery gets its own alternator. All right, other questions on alternators, or are we good?